This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1039. What is the 4% rule? By Al of faconfessions.com. And I'm Dan, I'm your host. Welcome back to a brand new work week, if you work Monday through Friday, here at Optimal Finance Daily. This is, of course, where I read to you from some of the very best personal finance blogs on the planet. And before I get to today's post from FA Confessions, I wanna give a big thanks to Fundrise for their support. As you may know, a portfolio that's well-diversified has better chances of long-term success. It should contain investments in various asset classes that include real estate, with real estate historically acting as an effective inflation buffer. Did you know that Fundrise was awarded the title of Best Real Estate Investment Platform 2019 from the FinTech Breakthrough Awards? I'll share why at the end of this episode. Visit fundrise.com slash OFD. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash OFD to have your first three months of fees waived. For now, let's get right to the post as we start optimizing your life. What is the 4% rule? By Al of faconfessions.com. There is a ton that's already been said about the 4% rule. This premise says that you can withdraw 4% of a well-diversified financial portfolio each year with a very low risk of ever running out of money. This 4% rule is also known as the safe withdrawal rate method. I'm a big fan of these general guidelines, and they are useful as a general framework. On paper, it makes a lot of sense and is a good starting point to plan for your financial future. Using this 4% rule guideline generally means that if you have a $1 million portfolio, you could comfortably withdraw up to 40 k per year with a very low risk of ever running out of money. It makes sense conceptually and gives a concrete goal or objective. In real life, I found that there's also a hidden danger to this concept, the danger of constantly reaching for more, more, and more. If I can live off 40 k per year with a $1 million, that means I could live off 80 k with $2 million. Wait, that means if I have 5 million, I'd get to live off of and spend 200K per year. Why stop there? Why not keep increasing the goal? I am totally guilty of this way of thinking when it comes to my own life and have often fallen into the trap of continuing to reach for more. If 80K per year to spend is good, wouldn't 200K per year be better? I believe this constant grasping for more is simply an attempt at finding a place of security a way of convincing ourselves that once we get to a certain destination, then we'll be happy, fulfilled, fully stable, and secure. Maybe what we're really reaching for is an illusion, a non-existent oasis where we assume fear and anxiety will cease to exist. I'm sure we've all heard stories of abysmally poor people who are highly satisfied with their lives, in stark contrast with the stories of insanely wealthy people who are miserable, even suicidal, because they can't escape their own mental drama and constant comparison. Maybe it's true that comparison is the thief of joy. Look, the 4% rule has its uses, and it really is a helpful way of creating a framework. What it cannot provide is an absolute guarantee that you will never run out of money. I believe that a final and complete feeling of financial security is an illusion. Some days I experience feelings of confidence and optimism about my own financial landscape. At other times, I feel intense insecurity and uncertainty when it comes to my personal finances. Sometimes both of those feelings hit me in the same week without any actual shift in my finances. Before you write me off as needing pharmaceutical intervention, consider that if even a finance professional experiences such vastly different emotions, maybe it's just the nature of being human. There is a fluctuating and constantly changing emotional landscape when it comes to money, finances, and the illusion of complete security. Our consumerist culture would have us believe there is such a thing as complete security, The reality of life experience is that the unexpected happens all the time. Markets crash, people die, tragedy or trauma visits us without warning and throws us off balance. Life experience happens to us all. I think it's a common and natural attempt to find a feeling of security by attaining a physical or conceptual goal, a final resting place to stop, relax, and have no anxiety. In my own life, I've ridden emotional and psychological waves of emotion regarding finances often enough to recognize the pattern. None of it is real, it's just whatever I'm feeling that day. The realization that emotions are going to come and go lightens the experience of them a bit. Oh, they can still feel heavy and even scary, just not as heavy as they once did. I've learned that my own emotions fluctuate based on many variables. Sleep, exercise, caffeine and alcohol, diet, family interactions, professional interactions, TV and social media consumption, they all play a role. When I've had a good night's sleep, no alcohol the night before, and a good morning workout, I'm usually in a pretty good emotional state and have a better chance of feeling relatively secure. 
We tend to feel most impulsive and likely to make poor decisions when we're stressed, overwhelmed, sleep-deprived, or unsettled. This is also when negative emotions are most likely to pay us a visit. At the end of the day, will I ever reach a place where I feel confident and secure enough to implement the 4% rule in my own life? I honestly don't know. Having some type of earned income feels far safer to me. As with any tool, the 4% rule as a framework has its uses. We can each choose to take whatever value that framework gives us. You just listened to the post titled, What is the 4% Rule? by Al of faconfessions.com. And thanks once again to our friends at Fundrise. Getting started with real estate investing doesn't belong to a secret group of powerful and wealthy individuals. Fundrise is the first online platform that makes real estate investing accessible to everyone. On Fundrise, you can personally select the properties you'd like to invest in, which range from downtown high-rises and commercial renovations to multifamily apartments. All of the projects on Fundrise are carefully vetted and managed by Fundrise's team of real estate professionals. The platform's investor-first model eliminates extraneous costs, therefore saving you time and money when you choose to invest. Visit fundrise.com slash OFD. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash OFD to have your first three months of fees waived. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and for subscribing and hope your week is off to a terrific start. I'll see you back here tomorrow for the Tuesday show where your optimal life awaits.